when it came to high-end merchandise, above and beyond customer service, and a reputation known for luxury, there was no department store quite as renowned as Lord & Taylor. For almost 200 years, the name stood out as a sign of high fashion. But their story is certainly a cautionary tale for the volatile retail world of the 21st century. The story begins with English-born iron molder Samuel Lord. Lord worked for James Taylor's Iron Foundry until 1824 when he married Taylor's daughter and moved to the United States. With $1,000 borrowed from his wife's uncle, in 1826 he opened a dry goods store in the Two Bridges neighborhood of Manhattan. Eight years later, his wife's cousin George Washington Taylor joined him, and the store was named Lord & Taylor. By 1860, two additional locations would open in Manhattan, a sign that business was booming and the store was providing an excellent product. Throughout the 1800s, the main branch would move several times, most notably in 1872 when it moved to 20th and Broadway as part of the Ladies' Mile, where women were generally allowed to shop without the necessity of being chaperoned by their men. Yeah, it was a very different time in history. By the early 1900s, as Manhattan's residents began moving north, other major department stores were migrating to Fifth Avenue north of 34th Street. Lord & Taylor would acquire space between 38th and 39th Streets and build what would become their flagship store, the marvelous permanent home for the business. It would also be during this time that the Lord & Taylor families would sell their stock into a new chain of department stores known as American Dry Goods, later Associated Dry Goods. The new company would oversee operations of several other independently owned department stores under one umbrella. Lord & Taylor was such an outstanding entity that it would draw customers from across the United States. In addition to its retail sales, the building offered a concert hall, restaurants, and even a doctor and a dentist's office. In 1921, Lord & Taylor hired a talented former teacher named Dorothy Shaver to head their comparison shopping bureau. Her innovations in modern fashion, art exhibition, and salesmanship allowed her to become a member of the board of directors in 1927. She worked her way up and by 1945 she became the president of Lord & Taylor, the first woman to be the president of a multi-million dollar company. She served as the company's president until her death in 1959. By the time she passed, Lord & Taylor had reached $100 million in annual sales. After World War II, Lord & Taylor began expanding aggressively across the United States. These new branch stores, in an effort to keep up with the luxurious nature of the company, set new standards among architecture of department stores. The store in Scarsdale, New York, and the Falls Church Seven Corner store were just some of Lord & Taylor's standouts in retail design. In 1986, Associated Dry Goods was acquired by the May Company in a drastic $2.47 billion merger, one of the largest in retail history at that time. Thus, May Company would then possess a national luxury brand in Lord & Taylor, as well as a discount franchise in Caldor, which at the time was also an ADG brand. As part of the May Company, many Han & Company, Wanamakers, and Woodward & Lothrop stores would be converted into Lord & Taylor branches. In 2006, the May Company was acquired by Federated Department Stores, the parent company of Macy's, for $11 billion. However, Lord & Taylor was divested from this merger. Federated closed seven stores considered conflicting with Macy's and sold the remaining locations to NRDC Equity Partners in 2006, essentially leaving the Lord & Taylor name as a legacy of sorts to the classic May Company. In 2008, NRDC purchased the nearly 350-year-old Hudson's Bay Company, Thus, Lord & Taylor was now partnered with long-standing New York City rival, Saks Fifth Avenue. Of course, by the end of 2008, the Great Recession was in full effect and the retail atmosphere in America was about to change and change rapidly. Lord & Taylor was slammed with several different major financial issues during this short time in their history. With the Great Recession, the first industries to get hit hard were fine dining and luxury retail. Lord & Taylor was no exception. In 2010, Hudson's Bay Company spent a quarter of a billion dollars upgrading stores, with most of that going towards the flagship store on Fifth Avenue. In 2017, yet another renovation took place at the Fifth Avenue store. 
In 2018, shopper information was hacked affecting 5 million Lord & Taylor and Saks Fifth Avenue customers. Also in 2018, Walmart began carrying Lord & Taylor brands, a curious decision applauded by some and reviled by others. By 2019, Lord & Taylor was in dire condition. It was in this year that the office space company WeWork finalized a deal to purchase the flagship store for $850 million. That same year, the brand was purchased by women's fashion rental company Le Tote, who decided to rebirth the brand with a focus on technology, even creating a pop-up store in New York City to show that they're still in existence. The WeWork experiment would prove to be a costly one, and by February of 2020, one year after their initial purchase, the building was then picked up by, who else? Amazon, for approximately $1 billion to be used for office space. And then came March of 2020. The COVID-19 pandemic which obliterated the retail world had temporarily shuttered all Lord & Taylor stores as it did with many other retailers. In early May of 2020, Lord & Taylor announced that when it was safe, the company would reopen stores in order to liquidate in preparation for bankruptcy. The end was getting closer to the once well-known brand. On August 20th, it was announced that 14 Lord & Taylor stores would reopen and survive the pandemic. However, exactly one week later, on August 27th, 2020, it was announced that all remaining stores would close, effectively ending Lord & Taylor's storied 194-year existence. Although its presence in shopping malls across the United States has ended, there is somewhat of a redemption to the story. In April of 2021, a mere two months after the final Lord & Taylor stores closed for good, the retail legend made a comeback. Well, sort of. Lord & Taylor has since operated as an online store. Their remaining assets were purchased by the Sadia Group in October of 2020, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. The online version of the classic retailer has a wide selection of men's and women's fashions, home furnishings, and much more. Lord & Taylor now joins their former one-time owners Le Tote, as well as Fashion to Figure, and the longtime mall staple New York & Company as just a few of the brands that Sadia Group have returned from demise. With digital sales making up such a massive part of the retail economy, it is good to see former brands coming back with a new presence. It will be interesting to see if the new version of the store can possibly live up to the original expectations and efforts that Samuel Lord and George Washington Taylor provided customers nearly 200 years ago.